I've been the King County Sheriff for just over a year. During that time, I've tried to attend as many roll calls as I could and otherwise meet with you. I wanted to listen to your concerns and suggestions, and I've learned a lot. The result has been new cell phones, new, easier to complete evaluations, much less sliding of patrol deputies, and a new precinct in Maple Valley, to name a few. But since we are so big and so spread out, meeting with you as much as I would like has been a challenge. I know you have high expectations for me and the rest of the command staff, and that's how it should be. And by now you've probably figured out that I have high expectations for you as well. That's why I'm making this video. But first let me say what a great organization this is. As a police agency, I believe we are truly world class. You've heard me say many times, you do more with less than any other police department I know. Despite the losses of over 150 positions from unincorporated King County alone over the last few years, you still get the job done. No, we don't have a DUI squad, we don't have motors, or even any dedicated traffic enforcement. Yet you still arrest drunk drivers, you patrol school zones, and deter speeders. But for the second largest police agency in Washington to not have DUI and traffic cars is a travesty and a disservice to the citizens we serve. What we do have are dedicated, extraordinary folks that work hard each and every day. You arrest people, you save lives both on and off duty. Deputies like Brett Davis, who saved the life of a drowning man in Mazatlan, Mexico, or Jerry Meyer and Michael Smith, who pulled a man out of a burning and wrecked car at great, great risk to themselves, or Brian Belongia, who arrested a murder suspect the same man who also wounded a California cop and had vowed to kill the next police officer he came across. Stories and people like this are not unique. They happen all the time in the sheriff's office, sometimes as dramatically as these are, but mostly fairly ordinary. The DV suspect that goes to jail, giving the victim some measure of safety, at least for the moment. The calming influence we have when a citizen suffers a traumatic incident in their lives, whether it is a traffic accident, burglary, or their car is stolen. The school resource officer that shows kids day in and day out that we are human after all. I see the work we do in the community. B.J. Myers, our storefront deputy in White Center, who citizens can come to when they have problems without having to call 911. Deputy Brian Barnes in Skyway, who facilitated the remodeling of our storefront to be an office we can be proud of and is championing the renaming of that office to the Elijahwan Brown Sheriff's Storefront. Elijahwan was the 12-year-old Skyway boy who was shot and killed in 2010 by a gang member in a case of mistaken identity. This is one way we can identify and relate to the community and I commend Brian for his efforts in Skyway. And let's not forget our professional staff throughout the Sheriff's Office. They provide backup support that we need to protect the public. These are all of the things I expect from the men and women working in the Sheriff's Office. And I expect you to do your job and do it well, whether heroic or ordinary. The role of the Sheriff's Office is to interact with the community. From time to time, I want you to park your patrol car, walk around in a business district, at a school, or at an apartment complex, meet people, talk to them, show them who we are, and collect intel on the bad guy at the same time. To the captains and above, if you are the CDO, my expectation is that you are out and about when the command staff is rarely seen, at night and on weekends in other words. If there is an incident, I expect the CDO to be there and assume a command role. Leadership doesn't come from behind a desk, nor can you lead via the radio. And remember, you are still a police officer with a badge and a commission card. Don't be afraid to use them. And when you're not wearing your uniform at work, make sure your gun is on your hip. If you are a sergeant, I expect you to be a role model and a mentor to your squad. Teach them how to be better police officers and then make sure they are. Here's your job description in just three words. Lead, motivate, supervise. If you do the first two, the last one will come easy. In other words, if you have stripes on your sleeve or brass on your collar, I expect you to provide leadership and motivation. 
You can never do less than the rank and file. No one is exempt from doing the right thing, and no one is exempt from doing their job well, and no one is exempt from being a leader. But despite the best intentions, despite a new focus and vision inside the Sheriff's Office, I have terminated over a dozen people last year. Many were relatively new hires that did not or were not going to make it through probation. We all remember how exciting it was to be hired and how badly we wanted to work for the Sheriff's Office. So I don't make those decisions easily. But I only want the best people working here and I will not second guess the input or opinions I get from my training officers. Equally distressing to me is when I am forced to terminate an employee for misconduct. That has happened five times in the last year. The first was a traffic deputy who logged over 800 infractions or citations as having been written, but in fact, he hadn't written any of them. I terminated a civilian employee for parking in the county garage when she knew she wasn't authorized to do so, at least 64 times. Each time she parked there, the sheriff's office was billed the parking fee, well over $1,000. Now that's not a huge amount in the scheme of things, but the conduct goes to the heart of who we are. I fired a deputy who stole narcotics that should have gone to the evidence room. I fired a deputy who knowingly collected over $2,000 in unauthorized specialty pay. How could I have trusted this person going forward? I terminated a deputy who violated citizens' constitutional rights by forcing this person to leave a public place under threat of arrest if he didn't comply. Then the deputy was dishonest about the facts of the encounter during the internal investigation. The last five cases have one thing in common. Their actions eliminated my trust in their professional judgment, and they violated the trust society places in them as well. Police officers and sheriff's deputies work largely alone and unsupervised with the power and authority to and responsibility to make decisions that directly affect the community we serve. Police officers have incredible access. We are alone in people's homes and businesses. We take people to jail. We spend years trying to build and maintain the confidence of the community. And it's my goal to make sure that confidence is never diminished. And when it comes to the use of force, using force as a police officer is a given. It will happen. But I expect the force to be the last resort, not the first. I was elected on the heels of two very devastating audits of our organization. One audit in particular was extremely critical. A major point in the audit was the lack of accountability in the sheriff's office. The employees were not being held accountable for their actions. That puts the trust of the citizens we serve at risk. I am not willing to lose that trust. So make no mistake, I intend to hold people in the sheriff's office accountable. Everyone must honor the law enforcement code of ethics and follow our general orders manual. I expect all ranks to be on board with this, just as I expect all of you to hold each other responsible for their actions. Everyone in the sheriff's office is expected to treat people with dignity and respect, no matter their status or situation. Now that doesn't mean if you, if you were trying to do the right thing and it goes sideways, that I won't back you up, because I will. Please understand, that's a given. Finally, a banner in the New York Police Department headquarters says it best. We are not just report takers, we are the police. You have the power to arrest, to take away somebody's freedom. Society confirms, confers on you that very unique responsibility, and society expects you to use that responsibility and authority, as do I but it is to be used with respect and is to be used without violating constitutional or civil rights. Now, as I speak around the county, I rarely quote presidents and I hardly ever quote dead presidents and never Calvin Coolidge. But in 1920, Coolidge said, the duties which a police officer owes to the state are of a most exacting nature. No one is compelled to choose the profession of a police officer, but having chosen it, Everyone is obliged to live up to the standards of its requirements. And make no mistake, I will hold you to those standards. 
Esprit de corps is important. I want all of you to be proud of your profession and your decision to work for the Sheriff's Office. To be a police officer, and especially a King County Sheriff's Deputy, is an honor and a privilege. I'm immensely proud of the men and women in the Sheriff's Office, both commissioned and professional staff. It is my profound honor to be your Sheriff. Thank you.